The Audi R8 is awesome. It's the sensible supercar. It likes to follow the rules and is a supercar accountants would drive. And it looks sleek too, so it should be aerodynamic, but surprisingly, it isn't. Let's see why. To begin with, things look good. The float over the roof and under the car both stay attached, which is vital if you want good aerodynamics. Even the diffuser is working very well as it kicks the float up and helps generate good downforce. And the rear wing has been cleverly positioned so that it sees very clean flow so that it can work properly. And we'll see later on how this smart positioning helped it produce a lot more downforce than it really should have. Even the wake looks pretty good here. It's not very big, which means the drag should be low. But here is where a few problems creep in. First, if we look at the front, it is just too blocky. The air has to move a lot to get out of the way. Fortunately, the hood is sleek and the flow can travel over it unmolested. But as soon as it hits the front windshield, it has to redirect a lot, and that is because the windshield is angled much more than the hood. This also makes the roof jut out more, which in this video, where we see the pressure, there is very low pressure over the roof. That greatly increases the lift of the car, which is exactly what we don't want. That lift makes the car unstable, and to counteract that, the underbody has to work a lot harder. As we see here, there is good low pressure under the front wheels and the diffuser, which if the car didn't have these low pressure regions, it might not even be able to surpass 20 km per hour without crashing. But looking at the rear wing, now we see the cleverness of its location. There is high pressure on top and low pressure underneath, which means it is producing downforce as we need it to. But if you were to position this wing right over the trunk, then the low pressure on the underside would cancel out with the low pressure over the trunk and reduce the downforce that the wing would create. Instead, because the rear wing is moved slightly back, tilted and elevated a little, the low pressure zone is not impacting the trunk as much, so less of the downforce is being cancelled out. That is a pro move by the engineers. But at the front and at the junction between the hood and the windshield, there are very high pressure zones, which are very bad for drag, especially considering that the rear window is seeing quite low pressure, which further exacerbates the drag production. Looking from above, there are some good points and some bad points. Some good ones include the rear wheels aren't producing that much of a wake and the flow around the rear sucks in quite well. But even that isn't that impressive considering how rounded the rear is and other cars, like some of the Ferraris we've looked at, do just as good a job but with more aggressive styling. Another region of not great aerodynamics is around the front wheels, where you get quite a lot of flow separation. Looking at the vortices forming over the car, there is quite a lot to be happy about. There aren't that many vortices from the lower half of the car, but the roof region, because it pokes out so much, produces some A-pillar vortices and C-pillar vortices. Many other supercars don't have them because their roofs are much sleeker, so the pillars don't jut out into the flow as sharply. The front wheel arches do a good job guiding much of the flow around the side of the car and getting into the side vents. If it wasn't for this flow, the side vents would have much lower energy flow entering. Incredibly, these side mirrors do a good job directing the flow to the rear wing, ensuring that it has clean flow to work with. Looking at the drag, there are a lot of regions around the car that don't produce much. But, the R8 suffers from some fairly basic problems. For example, the front wheels produce a lot of drag, and you'd be hard pressed to find a car these days with worse drag around here. The rear wheel drag is a little better, the rear of the car is where most of the drag is being created, and that partly comes from the imbalance in the pressure upstream to downstream. Its drag coefficient is an eye-watering 0.37, not great. This car is proof that being sensible is unaerodynamic. So be unsensible, eat a naked lunch, drive orange cars, and become a vegan. Just don't be sensible. Peace out, amigos.